This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Uh-oh, the auto industry is about to get hit with another shortage. This time, it's the graphite needed to make parts for EV batteries. Graphite producers cannot keep up with demand in China, and China accounts for 70% of graphite production globally. Reuters reports there's going to be a shortage of 20,000 tons of graphite next year, which is enough to make 250,000 BEVs. And that's a shortage in China alone, which means it's going to be worse in the rest of the world. Graphite is used in the anode or negative pole in a battery, and demand for the raw material is expected to grow 27% per year over the next decade. But that's only if producers can make enough of it. The USMCA, the free trade agreement between Canada, Mexico, and the United States, is confronting its first crisis. Yesterday, we reported Canada isn't happy with the Biden administration's proposal to give an extra $4,500 in incentives to EVs made in the U.S. by union labor. Canada wants to align EV incentives with the U.S. to settle the dispute. And now Mexico says it's going to take legal action and is threatening an appeal that will be decided on by an international panel. And speaking of EV incentives, Germany's new government said it will keep the country's current policy in place for another year, but after that, it will make it tougher for vehicles to qualify for incentives. Car buyers in Germany currently get 9,000 euros, or about $10,200 for a battery electric vehicle, while plug-in hybrids qualify for 6,750 euros or $7,600 in incentives. Germany didn't reveal specifics for the new policy, but it will be based in part on a minimum distance an EV must travel under electric power. So it sounds like plug-in hybrids and BEVs with small ranges won't qualify in the future. Germany is aiming to have at least 15 million BEVs on its roads by 2030. Daimler got headlines all over the world after it split into two companies, one for cars and one for trucks. But while we were all focused on that, Daimler quietly dropped a bombshell that most of us missed. It disclosed that BAIC, or the Beijing Automotive Industry Corporation, now owns 9.98% of Daimler. Add to that the 9.7% share that Geely owns, and two Chinese automakers now own nearly 20% of Daimler. Bloomberg reports that BAIC actually bought those shares back in 2019, but Daimler didn't disclose it then because legally it didn't have to since BAIC was just under the 10% threshold. Daimler and BAIC are joint venture partners in China, and BAIC promised it will not raise its stake in Daimler above what it already has. Even so, Germany is uncomfortable that Chinese companies are taking ownership stakes in so many of its industrial icons. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Is this one of the best looking minivans you've ever seen or what? Well, Buick's GL8 and Toyota's Elfart are about to get some real competition in China's premium van segment. The grill, the giant wheels, and the two-tone paint job almost give it a Maybach kind of feel to us. Gasku reports FAW's Han Ki brand will launch this MPV sometime next year. But production will be quite limited to only 20,000 units a year which means it will definitely be positioned as a luxury vehicle. Honda wants to help out highway departments. It came up with a way for the sensors in its vehicles to judge what kind of condition lane markings are in. It ranks them from, quote, ideal to needs repair. That, along with GPS data, could be sent to road crews so they know where to paint new lines. It will also help driver assistance systems like Super Cruise and Blue Cruise which need well-defined lane markings to operate. Otherwise, they just shut off. EV startup Volta Trucks, which is developing purpose-built electric commercial trucks, announced it started the engineering phase of development of its 7.5 and 12-ton variants. 
Last month, the company showed off a production-ready design of its 16-ton truck that was unveiled last year. Volta says the smaller trucks will have a similar design to the 16-ton with its low central seating position and wide visibility for drivers. Customer trials for the new models kick off in 2023, with series production scheduled to start a year later. Mobility is becoming electric, connected and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. Have you ever heard of a software company called Apex before? Neither did we, but Continental and ZF sure heard of it. Yesterday, they both bought a small chunk of Apex. ZF bought 5%, and while Continental did not disclose its holding, we're guessing it's about the same. Apex makes an open source software platform for autonomous vehicles called Apex OS. As the complexity of autonomous vehicles rockets upward, Continental and ZF say Apex OS will allow them to add functions and updates much more easily. And this is a trend in the industry we need to keep an eye on. Vehicles are increasingly becoming defined and operated by software, not mechanical bits or electrical components. And suppliers are racing to enhance their software capabilities. In an effort to slash charging time, reduce weight, and increase range, automakers are turning to higher voltage electrical systems. Most EVs on the road have 400 volt systems, but some newer EVs like the Porsche Taycan and Hyundai Ioniq 5 feature 800 volt systems. But BYD Electronics announced it's coming out with a new 1200 volt semiconductor chip that can be used to control power modules, electric motor function, power supply, and even solar energy inverters. BOID has already started mass production and says it will be supplying automakers starting this month. We've been teasing this revolutionary engine all week, but now let's drop some stats on you that might explain why we're so intrigued by it. It's got 160 horsepower and 170 pound-feet of torque. Okay, well maybe that doesn't get you excited, but what if we told you the engine only weighs 35 pounds? And what if we told you it idles at 1,000 RPM, but redlines at 25,000? Better still, you can stack these modules together to get some pretty impressive output. How does 1,000 horsepower from a 220-pound engine sound to you? Chris Theodore, one of the best product people in the business, was so impressed he joined the company. And the company, by the way, is called Astron Aerospace. The founder, president, CEO, and chairman is a guy named Matthew Riley, and he's going to be on AutoLine After Hours tomorrow. So is Chris Theodore. So we invite you to join us and learn more about what could be a game changer of an engine. But that's a wrap for today. Thanks for joining us, and we'll be right back here again tomorrow. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.